Okay, I'm Brian Hipkin. I'm currently Dean of Students at Regents College in London. Prior to that, I was Director of Student Services at the University of East London. Uh, I'm also uh, vice, currently um, Vice Chair Elect of Amoshi. My involvement was at the very beginning uh, because of my connections in Amoshi, working very closely with John Smith and the Aspire Scheme at the University of East London. Uh, and also with the technology partners, uh, Modus and Textools, as was then now ConnectX, um, I could immediately see the possibilities of connecting all these different organisations up together to enhance the uh, already great work uh, and the great impact that the Aspire project was making in terms of retention, progression, uh, and supporting the uh, education uh, of students at the University of East London. Students First is a collaborative project between one sector body, two universities and three technology providers. There's lots of one, two, threes going on with Students First, which is probably good because it's about counting beans in some ways. It's about students and how they get their bursaries provided efficiently by universities. For me, there's one overarching mission to this piece of work. It's about putting the student first in bursary provision. That's why it's called Students First. It also stands for Financial Interventions to Aid Retention and Student Transitions. There are two strands to the project. The first is a big chunk of data analysis, whereby continuing and looking at the information about bursary spends and tying that together with widening participation information and looking at whether that makes a difference to the students that are receiving those bursaries. The second strand for me is about maximising the different technologies that are available, enabling them to speak together but doing all that thinking about the student. So how can we take available products that are out there and mash them together almost so that the student's getting a really personalised experience that is helping them with their student life, with their financial literacy and with retention and transitions. Alongside that there are three principal benefits that we're hoping to see and we've started to see. An improved understanding about the genuine value of a targeted bursary. The work that we're looking at only allows bursaries to be spent in particular places that have been defined by the university. One argument is that that will help the student in their academic progression, it will focus how they use their bursary. The other argument is that if a student can't pay their rent, whether or not they can buy books is irrelevant. For me, that issue is slightly different looking at the two universities that we're using. They're looking at populations where the amount that you get by bursary probably won't cover two months in a shared flat. It will cover books and a laptop and it will get people onto campus. So if that's getting people to engage with their education, that's potentially a very important thing. Through working with two universities, we're having a very immediate impact at more than one institution. Most of these kind of projects are set up for one university. We're already hitting two before the project's even finished. Beyond that, we're finding out lessons that can be applied across the sector because we're seeing them at more than one place. So if it was unique learning to that institution, that's a great thing. But if we're seeing really common features come out at more than one, maybe people need to start sitting up and paying even more attention. The third real benefit to me about this is that it's a genuinely collaborative project. It makes it very different to lots of other things that have been funded in this strand, and that's a good thing. Whilst we are working with particular commercial providers, nothing that we are doing is specific to their product. It is about how we can make things work together in the student's interest, and how we can learn about that, so that institutions can then go away and use technology, perhaps from the people we're working with, but perhaps from other people but they can learn how to do that through the lessons of this project. From the Amoshi perspective, there's another one, two, three going on. The first is my overarching reflection. From a national professional association's perspective, this kind of work ensures that we are in touch with what is going on in the profession, and more than that, 
we can enable it to develop and we can support you as professionals and people enabling financial literacy amongst students. The two are around the areas of challenges that we've had in managing this project. Two things, firstly, it's always tricky coordinating something with so many partners. It's something that a lot of other GIST projects don't have as part of them, but it's also a real strength of the project. Whilst it's been challenging, and I think all of the partners will agree with that, it's been incredibly rewarding. To see these kind of partnerships develop through the lifetime of a project is great, and that can only be good for the student. The second challenge was about using service design. That was a key part of the project, and it's a key part of many of these pieces of work. When we started it, it was incredibly daunting, it was incredibly hard work, and it was very onerous. There's a reason that the first project that did service design did just service design in 18 months. It takes a long time to get your head around. What we found once we'd done it was that the institutions were immediately able to go out and start addressing issues they hadn't even realised were there and making the bursary provision process much smoother, more streamlined both for students and for the professionals delivering them. But more than that, the three, and that's about the benefits for me. Firstly of that, it's consolidating our national strategic priority at Amoshi of value and impact understanding, alongside our active engagement with student finance issues. We're the only organisation to be on all five of the Student Finance England stakeholder groups, and we've developed this national project value and impact that we're rolling out more areas of. It's really good to tie those two senses of policy and professional practice together. Secondly, this project is more timely than we could have ever imagined. When we put this together, we knew the Brown Review would be coming out. We knew that something would happen around fees. We didn't know that we would be getting headlines about £9,000 fees. We would, getting, we would be getting coalitions working together to develop completely new priorities that they hadn't had before around funding and fees, widening participation, fair access. It's really critical to be involved in something like this at this point in time, and we're leading that. So we're really pleased to be championing something of real timely relevance. And finally, people are asking about it. People want to know what we're finding out about. There have been big, bold statements about how bursaries should be provided, about whether smart cards work or not. There hasn't been anything that finds out whether they do and whether they really help with student retention. We've recently recruited Diane Hopkins to chair the independent board of this project, and he and colleagues in parliament, in government, in all kinds of areas, want to find out about it. For what started off as a very small GISC project, that's quite amazing. The final thing that I wanted to say about Students First was really to thank everybody that's involved in it. We've got a great research team at Continuum who are really pushing the boundaries and how they can manipulate the data to find out what it means. We've had some real great partnerships develop with the commercial providers. They're genuinely interested in finding out about this and they're genuinely interested in working with us to understand what students need and what student services professionals need. That's what we need to see, not services that are giving us an answer to a question that we don't have but services that are providing solutions to real issues for real people at the coalface doing these jobs. So I really want to thank those people, and I really want to thank JISC and also Moshi for championing this work. I think the impact on students is the seamlessness. Uh, students today, for them, these are not technologies. They may be technologies when viewed from a certain generational point of view, but actually they are a way of life. So particularly with things like mobile, uh, with tablets, etc., students expect information, advice and guidance to be available in these forms. Uh, so therefore they're very, very comfortable in using these technologies. And therefore it's important, in fact, it's beholden on educational institutions to grab this opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity because students have the technology, universities don't need to provide it. What they do need to do is to be able to deliver accurate, timely and appropriate information directly and literally into the students' hands. 
Uh, and I think bringing these things together uh, can make a very real impact because often students don't actually realise that things like the Aspire scheme exists. Uh, and if they don't know something exists, you can't even start uh, to give them what they need and for them to actually reap the benefits from it. In light of funding changes in 2012 and an enhanced package of bursaries and scholarships, I believe research in this area is crucial. Many universities initially erred on the side of offering fee waivers, but at UEL we've always believed that this offers no assistance to students at the time when they need it most, in other words during their studies, and therefore benchmarking and research to validate this objective I think is critical and we hope it will validate our belief that this supports our students learning, it supports their student experience and it aids retention for the institution. UEL has operated an Aspire Progress Bursary since 2006 so we always garner feedback from our students on how the bursary is progressing and their satisfaction with the bursary. In one survey of over 850 respondents, over 95% actually said that they would recommend this bursary scheme to their friends in other universities, and over 75% actually said that the bursary was directly beneficial to their studies. For example, one student actually said, it helps us meet the needs and facilitate purchasing equipment that is directly applicable to our studies. Um, the Aspire scheme at Anglia Ruskin has been running for three years now um, and it's been, I think, difficult sometimes for students to understand in the beginning. But once they've started to understand what it means and that they can get £500 worth of um, book station and other accessories via the scheme, it started to really help them um, and they've become very engaged with it uh, and now they're much more kind of excited about it and much more demanding about it, which is you know, excellent news for us. And they're also much more um, keen on what else they might be able to use it for. John Smith have also been helping us because they've been producing data for us to help us understand a bit more about what that might mean for those students who are accessing the bursary through John Smith's. One of the interesting things about this project is it's highlighted for us again about how we collect data um, and how we can use it sometimes in ways that we didn't perhaps think of before. Um, it's become uh, clear for us that we need to be better at how we use uh, data in this particular regard because Anglia Ruskin has become a very data driven institution and this unearthed a little corner where we weren't perhaps doing it as well as we might do. John Smith can certainly do more for us, they're really keen to do more for us and one of the things this has prompted is a, a meeting which is happening shortly about greater data sharing uh, than we currently have with them. The sector is changing enormously and I think we're all really concerned about sure we're doing the best for our students. Uh, and the reality is students generally don't really care who provides them things as long as they get what they need. Uh, I think for many of us in higher education now it's an interesting time full of opportunity to look and see what else we might do with other providers that perhaps we haven't worked with before. Um, and certainly I think this project has been really interesting in terms of working with people like John Smith's text tools, Modus, to think about how we can work with private providers, not just in terms of what perhaps they can offer us, because I think perhaps we have some idea of that, that maybe how we can improve our understanding of each other so that we get the greater synergy than we've had before. I think the students have definitely benefited from the um, bursary management, certainly the targeted allocation of funds. Um, Clearly, initially, students would like to have cash. Um, however, targeting these funds through a smart card system, um, through other communication channels, is certainly helping them. And I think we're getting a very positive response from the students as well, appreciating that it is adding value to their education and helping them to manage um, their funds through that process. Service design and the blueprint exercise in itself has been hugely beneficial to, I think, particularly the higher education partners as part of this project. It certainly brought a lot of parties across the institution together around a table and it sort of allowed us to take a step back and review the whole process from start to finish and look at the student journey through the process. And that certainly highlighted areas that we could actually enhance and improve service delivery 
and it also generated further discussions as to how we can enhance and you know improve the the future offering of the bursary to our students for many of us it also consolidated our understanding of some of the aspects of the bursary which was hugely important and then I think during the life of the project appointing an independent uh, chair of the project board I think this added an extra dimension and an extra credibility to the project and will help ensure that the project is appropriate, appropriately and widely disseminated across the sector, not only, only during the life of the project, but also after the life of the project itself.